unconscious. That's the difficulty with it. But this is this ca can cause some very hard, severe misunderstandings. The way we think. Now, I've worked with a number of leadership teams, international. So you would have maybe two that are linear and maybe four that are spiral. <laughs> well, they're trying to work as a team. Okay. So naturally, it's going to take them a long time to make decisions. And they just have to be patient with that, especially this group. And if they really believe in the team, they're going to have to give in and let it happen. But this is really hard. And so many of the people that are coming to our country at this point, they're not coming from the West, but they are coming from the East, from the South. And this would be their way of thinking. This is their process of making decisions. So prepare your souls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I noticed also that the spiral logic isn't just an individual logic. It also involves you have to ask, have everybody express their opinion. And so it's, uh, that also takes a long time. That's right. And also, those of you who might be working in formation, it's not the individual person that can make that decision, but rather it is the, community. the family. It might be the village. They're all involved in everybody's decision making. And I make the decision not for myself as an individualistic Sister J. Francis Hoffman. Sister J. Francis Hoffman. But I belong to a community. I belong to a village. And uh, whatever decision I make has to be a benefit to the whole village, not just to me. So remember that if you are accepting or thinking of interviewing individuals from what we call the Global South, which includes the East and the Southern parts. And that's so different from the way we think. We become 18, we can make our own decisions, period. And it's what I need. I don't have to be so concerned about my brothers and sisters. They, they'll take care of themselves, or they'll learn to take care of themselves. Where young people that are entering religious life have to be concerned about the family. And they're going to have to share some of the resources with the family. And I have to be okay with that. So that half of the rice in the pantry goes to the family. And they just, it's just understood that's the way it would be. Where we keep track of how much rice we buy. I saw a hand up back here. We, we had an uh, experience like the linear or in the spiral logic. There was a young man in Cincinnati who died. He's 30 years old, he's from Guatemala. He has a wife and he leaves a six month old child. And the mother in Guatemala wants the body back. The village wants the body back. But people up here in the States who run the big corporations that may give some of the money are going, let's get him cremated, buried, punk, or plunk, it's over with tomorrow. And they're saying, why? The mother wants to see her child. 
the village ones that said goodbye wants to say goodbye again. You know, and it's like, it doesn't make sense. No, maybe it doesn't make sense, but it does to, to the family and it does to the people who belong to the Guatemalan community. And they'll raise the money to send the money back. And we'll say, well, why don't they use the money to pay their rent? That's not the priority right now. You know. Excellent. That's an excellent example. We, we had one of our priests die at, at my home parish, and they're from, um, they're Camboni, so he was Italian. Um, and he, he was given permitted permission to be buried in the cemetery next to the church. Um, and one of, the, one of the ladies in the village, she comes up to me and she goes, Mary, doesn't he have a family? <laughs> you know, doesn't he have a family? And I go, oh, he's a missionary, and he considers the place he's working with, the people here in the village, his family. Oh, well then we need more priests buried here. <laughs> That's right. And those are some of the customs. It flows into customs, traditions. And they're very different than our thinking. Our thinking would be, well, what's most economical? What's going to be the easiest for everybody? That's not. And that's the distinction between what we call the individualist and the collectivist. But we'll be doing more work with that later. Okay, so customs and symbols, myths and legends, proverbs, all of those Tell us about the culture, deep down. And, you know, if you're working with somebody of a different culture, ask, what are some of the symbols in your culture, in your language? Particularly if you're doing spiritual direction. Because those symbols are going to speak of God. They're going to tell us who God is. What are some of the images, maybe even the images of Mary? And last night when we were having supper and Maria was there and she was saying how many different images of Mary she has learned about through her work with the Hispanic. Every country has a particular image of Mary. Okay. That speaks of their religion. That speaks of their reality. So invite them to talk about it. You will learn a lot about them. So those myths, proverbs, a great way to learn of learning the culture. Uh, religious expressions. What is the popular religiosity? Not necessarily what they do in church, but what do they do in their homes to talk, to express their religious sentiments? That's, that's where the real faith is. Because they'll do whatever you tell them to do in church. But what do they do when they go back home? around death, around birth, mm. around all those important aspects of life. How do they celebrate that? So that those expressions of the religious experience are very, very important to kind of get a sense of the culture there. And so spend time listening. You don't have to teach catechism. Listen to their catechism, how they see it. Uh, history. 
the history of the country is extremely important. Even the history of the family. What was going on in the family? Lots of times the oldest child's culture is going to be very different than the youngest child, depending on what was going on with the family. Was there sickness? Was there divorce? Was there death? Was there what was going on in their city, in their town, in their country? Were they at war? Was there civil war? All of that makes a person who they are today. And we need to learn that. What was going on? And particularly the countries in Central America. Every one of them had such, have such a history. Also, what was the involvement of United States policies? And sometimes we may not even know it. There can be some very strong feelings in countries against United States because of what our government stood for, what our government policies were. That is part of their culture, and it's in there. It's inside them. The same as that strong feeling I had against the British. That came from history. What happened? Yes. My experience when I was in, Gua <clears throat> in a language school in Guatemala, I was just shocked because they taught us some of what the, our involvement, the United States involvement was, was in um, informing some of the horrible things that happened in the Guatemalan history. And I, w I just kept getting so embarrassed and yes. feeling so bad about it. And what was the, so amazing is that the Guatemalan people did not hold that as against us personally. No. You know, and I was, I was walking around thinking, you know, I should cover my head somehow. But they were so loving and accepting, and they realized it wasn't us, it was our government. And I, I was just so impressed with that. And sometimes I think we, we need to learn that here in the States, too, you know, that it's not the people, it's, a, it's the governments that are really so corrupt or doing some things that are very, very harmful. Very, very true. It is. And the worst part is we don't know it. We're ignorant of it. That's the worst part. We have no idea what we did with Chile and what we caused there. So that's important to know the history, the history of your own country, your own culture, but also the history of the other. What was going on? OK, language. I could go on for weeks on this. But all I'm going to say is language is the door to the culture. Language is the door to the culture. So if you want to move into a new culture, you've got to know the language. You've got to take the time to study it. And this is, I think, one of the sins of the United States. We are monolingual, and we're perfectly satisfied with that. Everybody else is at least bilingual. But that's okay. Everybody should know English. So the language and culture learning go together. Okay, world view. I think I will stop right here. <laughs>